I believe basically you guys have uh, witnessed the video. That's our campus. It's about uh, 105 acres uh, conducive uh, campus. It's located in a city called Nilai. And um, okay, for those who have uh, not familiar with Malaysia, um, usually when international students arrive, you will arrive at Kuala Lumpur International Airport. However, this airport is not located at Kuala Lumpur itself. It's located in a, uh, in another state called Negeri Sembilan. So it will take about uh, about 60 minutes from the Kuala Lumpur International Airport uh, to uh, city center. However, our university is uh, uh, located quite nearby to the international airport, which will take about... Um, maximum about 20 to 20 20 minutes to 30 minutes from the international so i would say in terms of the location it's quite convenient for international student that is number one let me try share you the Okay. Am I sharing a a copy a PDF? Uh no no not not at the moment. There is no screen share at the moment. <clears throat> okay. Okay. okay yeah it's good now. okay good so basically um as you can see here as you watched in the video clip just now it's about 105 uh, acres of the campus uh and we have uh, more than uh, uh 40 000, sorry uh 15,000 students who have graduated from our Nilai, Inter Nilai University. And uh, mm -hmm. overall international, we have uh, students from uh, over 40 countries as of today. And um, uh, just now I was mentioning about the location. Uh, location is quite nearby to the international airport. And uh, from Kuala Lumpur city center, it will take about 45 minutes to 60 minutes. And in terms of the public transportation over there for students to, um, uh, you know, like visit around, uh, it's quite uh, convenient. Uh, 24 hours, you can get um, 
grab services or even uh, in term of the public transport as in bus or train uh, it's available uh, quite uh, frequently for students to commute from Nilai to Kuala Lumpur or YC versa even to other states uh, in Malaysia especially in um, uh, in West Malaysia right and talking about the uh, rating of course uh, many of you are concerned about the QS rating and all that for your kind information um, we have not gone into the uh, ranking yet because we haven't participated we are in the midst of uh, preparing the documentation for the ranking however uh, for last year we have gotten our QS five star rating in six categories awarded by the QS university rating as you can see here these are the six categories including teaching facilities, employability, academic development, inclusiveness, and also a special category, particularly for MBA, Master of Business Administration. So apart from the world, rank, world uh, rating, we do have uh, our internal or nationwide uh, ranking, which is called, uh, this is rated under Malaysian Ministry of uh, Higher Education and it's called, it's been uh, rated under competitive category uh, and also under Setara, also a local uh, uh, rating system. We has been, uh, we have been uh, uh, given as the exceptional performance under few uh, Q evaluation areas. So basically in term of the recognition of the program, um, Usually, we need to have a Ministry of Higher Education and also here in Malaysia, there's another accreditation body which is called Malaysian Qualification Agency. This two, uh, approval and accreditation is applicable for all the universities in Malaysia, doesn't matter it's public or private. So, uh, the first step before you decide to enroll into the program Number one, you have to make sure the university is approved institution by the MOHE, Ministry of Higher Education. And number two, you have to uh, ensure the programs are accredited. Uh, it's either partially or full accreditation by uh, MQA, Ministry of uh, uh, yeah, Ministry of uh, Qualification Agency. So these two are very important. And uh, Okay, talking about Nilai University, these are the uh, programs that currently we are providing. Uh, overall, it's uh, more than 50 uh, programs, starting from foundation level, diploma program. Foundation, we have two uh, uh, specialization. One is leading to business and the other part is leading to science. Basically, for those students who are after their O level or SSC, year 10 they can go into foundation basically this foundation is just equivalent to a hsc or a level program but the duration is just one year and then after you complete this foundation of one year you can progress directly into degree uh, for three years or four years uh, for some programs so we would say here generally uh, quite familiar the foundation program uh, and uh, i would say it's a uh, short or or a short pathway for you to complete your degree okay and then the second level will be diploma program so for this program those who are having a uh, SSE uh, O level or even HSC students they can apply for the program if you have really decided the specialization that you want to go in so in terms of the programs that we have currently is accounting business culinary nursing it computer science aircraft uh yeah aircraft we have both uh, advanced and diploma program and for degree we have uh, in in the similar um disciplines as in accounting uh finance and financial technology fintech is one of the upcoming popular program and in terms of the career uh opportunities also is uh, increasing worldwide and other management marketing hrm and international programs and we have hospitality and tourism uh, applied sciences uh, mainly is for biotechnology and also for nursing and 
IT is mainly for software engineering, IT, and with, this, with some specialization as in internet engineering and cloud computing, data science, application development, this ODL is an online program and also cyber security. And apart from that, we do have uh, postgraduate programs mainly for uh, those who have completed undergraduate. And uh, if you uh, are asking about the popular programs over here in Nela University, number one, uh, we'll go to aircraft maintenance. Even from Bangladesh, we, our recent intake is in January. We have a uh, quite number of uh, students who have uh, enrolled for this aircraft maintenance. And talking about this aircraft maintenance engineering, even though it's a diploma program, uh, however, uh, student upon completing this program, student uh, will be able to sit for the uh, exam. Uh, it's called IASA. IASA is a uh, European uh, Aviation Safety Agency uh, licensing board. So basically, when you complete this program, uh, you will you will need to sit for this uh, exam and eventually you need to work for five years in order to get the license to practice as a uh, engineer so this is number one number two uh it will go to the popularity will go to nursing program um worldwide uh if you see there's a lot of uh, shortage for nurses not only here in malaysia but uh talking about worldwide uh, especially in middle east uk australia and so on so these kind of countries are looking for uh many nurses and Particularly here in Malaysia, there's only limited universities are offering this program because number one is governed by the body. For nursing here, we have a uh, nursing board Malaysia, which is also similar to a uh, licensing body. So after you complete a diploma program or even a bachelor nursing program, you have to sit for the nursing board Malaysia examination in order to pass your exam. After you pass your exam only, you'll be given a license to practice as a staff nurse. And this uh, license together with the diploma is recognized uh, worldwide. Many of our previous graduates are working in now in Singapore, uh, Middle East, UK, Australia, and, uh, and, and many more countries. So in terms of the recognition so, so far for many of our program or our popular program, as I mentioned just now, there's no issues. Even uh, some Singapore hospitals, uh, like Raffles and few more, uh, they, they even sponsor our students. Uh, but for now, it's only limited to Malaysian students and, and, and some international countries, uh, which is sponsored by the hospital. Fully sponsors to study this program and upon completion, the students need to work for the Singapore hospital. So these are some of the arrangements that we are making for our students. And apart from that, IT, business and also uh, culinary and hospitality are also quite uh, popular programs currently. Uh, especially for Bangladesh uh, students right now. So I believe uh, apart from our recognition, Employability is one of the key component that student is uh, worried now, which is uh, your work, your jobs. So apart from your classroom training, all our program, especially for diploma and degree, it comes together with internship and it is compulsory component in all our curriculum. So before you uh, complete or graduate for the program, we make sure you gain some industry experience as well. So that once you are you know, out there in the job market, uh, you're not blur uh, and only you know, by, go by the book. So you still have the industry experience to give you some exposure. And apart from that, apart from the curriculum and all that, uh, do for the final year student, we do um, prepare, uh, you know, job fair and then uh, some coaching classes, how to uh, write your resume, how to do uh, grooming session, those kind of, uh, you know, assistance for students to make them ready for the job market. And also, we have uh, collaborated many, uh, collaborated with many industry partners uh, for for students' internship, for job employability, and also to get some uh, industry visit. Those kind of um, uh, initiatives. So, students when we are studying here, not only the classroom. 
However, we will give you the experience <coughs> up to the uh, <coughs> boardroom of um, uh, industry people. Meaning, uh, for some projects, you even give uh, you you will even get uh, some experience working with the industry people or managers or or, or even higher authorities or for some projects. So these are the value proposition uh to our programs apart for your paper qualification. Okay, and I think uh in terms of the fee structure. Uh, well, fee structure, I think uh, after the session, uh, I will get our, our partner to share with uh, all of you guys. But let me talk about the scholarship uh, and also other schemes that are available for now. Uh, a good news is for those um, students from SSC and HSC, when you're applying for your foundation, diploma, or bachelor's degree, uh, the highest quantum of scholarship that currently we're having is 50%, which um, the score required score is 4.7 out of 5. So with this um, score, you can apply for 50% scholarship, which is called a high achiever scholarship. Apart from this, we do have a merit scholarship of... Um, 30%, 20%, and also 15%, depending on your marks. And uh, after you complete your diploma, when you want to progress to degree, we still have some scholarship up to 30%. So these are some of the uh, scholarship schemes that currently um, we, are, we, are, we are having for our international students. Um, all right, I think... Yeah. Um. Anyone got any questions? I think I'm the only one talking, so I do not know whether you guys understand or not. <laughs> oh no, no, <laughs> they they understand. But no, we'll be uh we'll be taking questions soon. Uh, I I believe you have covered almost everything. Uh, have you yeah. uh you have covered about the accommodation? Okay. Accommodation, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I I missed out that part. Accommodation we have on campus, which is within the campus. It's just a walk-in, it's just one or two minutes. And um, yeah. basically, the options are, it's either single or twin sharing with or without aircon. So, I would say in terms of the rental, is it is quite uh, reasonable. Lah. So, we will share the uh, fee schedule uh, with you as well. However... Uh, it is not compulsory for you to uh, stay in the hostel. If you prefer to have an outside unit within uh, the um, commuting range, uh, there are plenty of apartments available as well. And the good news is we do have a shuttle bus service from early morning until late evening, uh, I think 8 or 8.30 uh, around Nilai area. Uh, around the Nilai City area to uh, some main spot area uh, to train station um, and also to some uh, shopping malls for our students to buy some groceries and all that. And it's FOC, free of charge. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So, yep, I can uh, ask you question. Uh, you guys can ask away and I will forward the questions to Miss Mala. All right. Uh, I think, yeah, there's one question. IELTS required. Oh, good question. <laughs> okay. IELTS, yes, it is required, but it's not compulsory. Okay. It is not the only requirement. If the student has done your, your O-level, your O-level, Cambridge O-level, uh, IELTS is not required. So the IELTS score can be exempted. And for, for those who have done their program in English, say, for instance, you have done your diploma uh, program over there and you want to progress uh, to degree with some credit transfer arrangement and all that. And if your diploma fully was done in English uh, with the medium of, of uh, instruction letter from your university or college, we can give you exemption for the English. However, as general, English is still required unless oh. if you have uh, some medium of instruction or your previous studies was done in English, it can be exempted. 
Okay. And what about like the master's, uh, like uh, uh, for the master's uh, program? Now, same goes for the master's program for the, yeah. if they have MOI. Uh, yeah. for, uh, for master, PhD, and even degree, if their previous uh, education was done in English with the MOI, medium of instruction letter, we can give you exemption. No issues on that. Perfect, perfect. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's another question. Uh, is there any work opportunity around Nilay area as it's very far from Kuala Lumpur? Okay, to be honest with you, this is a very honest answer. Uh, even in KL, in I mean in Kuala Lumpur, job uh, opportunities or, or working is not officially ex uh, approved by the immigration especially for undergraduate master is different but for undergraduate especially foundation diploma and degree student uh, you are not allowed to work unless unless there is a there, there is a condition unless if you have a holiday more than seven days or semester break during this time you can work uh, but you need to get approval from your university, a, a letter from the university that uh, stating uh, this is your uh, semester break and you are allowed to work. So that's how it works. Um, here in our campus, just for you, for some students to gain some pocket money, we do have a lot of uh, campus events. So many of our students, they do participate and get some pocket money. However, uh, we do not have any opportunity to cover your full expenses as a part-time job. Yeah. Okay. But uh, there was a few questions like from like, uh, what uh, like a lot of people has asked before and obviously a few of them here has met with me before face to face and there was this okay. one question with which they always ask and uh, it's in their mind too about like freelancing uh the freelancing opportunity in um uh, malaysia while you are studying is oh, it, freelancing uh, yes freelancing okay. opportunity. freelancing as long as you're not physically uh working uh, or or getting a payroll from another company, then it shouldn't be a problem. Okay, for example, I'm telling you, uh, recently I uh, met some of my uh, international students who do online designs. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, uh, like the online cards, graphic cards and all that. That is called freelancing and they're getting a lot yeah. of uh, orders, you know. So exactly. that is not restricted. Yeah, that is not restri restricted. Okay. Mm. So yes, uh, so they will be able to work as long as it's uh, within campus. Yes. And on even holidays. Uh, yeah, uh, and, and, and on online, uh, no yeah. restriction. And yes. even some students, right, uh, they do tuition classes. Yes. Like home tuition, yes. home tuition, uh, that, yeah. that, those kind of jobs, no issues. Yeah, so there is a lot of opportunity to make money yes, in uh, Malaysia yes. while you're studying. Yes. It just has to be like, you know, it doesn't has to be a contractual, like a physical job. After a yeah. quarter barben, like uh, tuition -y then freelancing job like graphics design or something like that uh opportunity and on during holidays holidays you can work okay another question which came out uh is it possible to bring my wife along with uh, along while i'm enrolled in a diploma or master's program are there any housing facilities Under, for the spouse the undergraduate is not allowed uh, for a spouse visa but for master and phd yes you can apply Okay. But however, accommodation is not available in the campus. In the campus, as I mentioned, it's just only single or twin sharing for students only. And uh, what and uh, how does one register the spouse? So I meant, I guess, what he meant was like, what's the process to bring your spouse for, like, say, a uh, master's or a PhD program? Uh, sorry, I don't get your question. What what's so the what's, process? Is it was was the process to bring say a dependent like a uh, ah like a dependent? Spouse. Okay, yeah. basically the applicant must complete the process first, as in okay. uh, after getting the student visa, and he needs to come over first and uh, activate his student visa because the moment they got the student visa, it's not activated yet. No, it's just yeah. a single entry visa single and then entry. they come over here and then it will take one month to get the endorsement from the immigration after the one month of uh, endorsement only we can apply for the dependent pass okay uh is there any transfer programs to usa or any other country 
<laughs> okay. Uh, currently, we are engaging with one of our partner uh, who is uh, assisting us, uh, basically assisting our students to do the all the partner application as in they have collaboration with all this uh, university. Basically, the the what do you call that the outsource uh, was our our colleagues before. It's it's under our university. However, we outsource it, and then uh, they have uh, more than uh, I think overall is about seven hundred partners worldwide. So basically, student just to. Uh, need to approach them and tell them which university they prefer or which city or which country and they will uh, find out all the information about the university about the fee how is the visa application and those kind of things and also in terms of the credit transfer how long the duration will be and those kind of information okay perfect mm, so we have the expert expert to advise uh, on all this uh, all this information to the students perfect and I hope that answered uh, your question. And the next one is, when is the next you take for diploma in uh, aircraft maintenance and the advanced ah. diploma in aircraft engineering? Okay. We have for this year, foundation, diploma, and degree. After this, we have uh, four intakes, May, June, uh, September, and October. So these four intakes, uh, let me repeat, it's for May, June, uh, September, and October. These four intakes is uh, applicable for foundation, uh, diploma, and also a degree program. And for master, uh, we have uh, two more intakes, which is May and October. Uh, and for PhD, our next intake is by July. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. And uh, when is the next intake for master's in civil engineering? So okay. like so project management or something like that, I'm guessing. Yeah, like we have uh, engineering by research. So it depends on the topic that uh, you're going to choose later. However, when if you wish to do some specialization that related to civil, you just need to give us the research topic as overall, the overall research topic, and we will get back to you uh, after consulting the supervisor. And the next intake for me, uh, uh, next intake for master program is May and uh, October. Okay. May and October. Yeah. All right. Uh, any more questions from uh, any of you? Are there questions still up there? <clears throat> okay. Uh, just to give you a rough idea, what is a diploma in aircraft and uh, what is the difference between diploma in aircraft and advanced diploma in aircraft is diploma, this diploma in aircraft engineering is two and a half years program. Two years will be your theoretical and six, year, uh, six months will be your on-the-job training. So uh, upon completion of this program, your advanced diploma will be another one year only which is equivalent to uh, UK Kingston University uh, degree qualification. So when the student, the moment student complete uh, the diploma uh, and progress to a degree one year, within uh, three and a half years, uh, they will complete a bachelor degree program. Total three and a half years. And also, upon completing your advanced diploma, you will get the equivalent certificate from Kingston University, UK. Okay, so it will be a, like a dual program. Yeah, yes. Okay, perfect, perfect. Would you like to add anything else uh, from uh, your side? Uh, well, uh, we are planning to come and visit... Uh, you people directly, okay. uh, probably somewhere around uh, April, end of April, after this uh, eighth festival. So hope everything goes on well. And yes. uh, in between, meanwhile, if you guys have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach us out and we, we will revert to you accordingly. And uh, before that, I really would like to thank uh, our trusted partner in Bangladesh, uh, which is uh, Exeom uh, Education and uh, Immigration. 
Um, I think uh, in our past uh, few years of a relationship, we understand uh, the services, the information, and also the guidance that our partner giving to our students are really, really uh, impressive. And um, so far, I think uh, they've been uh, giving us uh, quality students. And I hope uh, the the support continues as the same that you guys are, are giving uh, now. And uh, please feel free to uh, reach out to our Exeom uh, Education and Immigration team uh, for further assistance. Perfect. Thank you so much, Ms. Mala. Thank you so much for your time. And hopefully we will see you at the end of maybe April, whenever you guys yeah, pick a day. I'm, I'm really excited. And, yes. and, and just for your information, this is not going to be my first uh, visit. I think it's more than uh, 10 times I've visited Dhaka <laughs> and a few other cities. <laughs> yeah, we are excited yeah. to have you. We're excited to have thank you here. You, thank you. Okay, so there isn't any more questions coming from anybody. So I guess that's it. We can wrap this up now. Thank you yeah. so much for your time, for your valuable time, for uh, for giving us the knowledge about Nila University yeah, and the yeah. programs. And to the participants, if you have any questions, question you can ask me the questions. If you have any questions which you want to ask Ms. Mala, yeah, you can ask me the questions. I uh, me, I uh, will forward those questions to Miss Mala if you guys need to. So, kono question thakla amake jigesh koren. If jodi question Miss Mala jono hoy, I me holo question ta Miss Mala ke forward kore dibo. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your valuable time, and hopefully we will see you in a month or so. Sure, sure. Yeah. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. And uh, I really appreciate uh, for your time uh, today with us at Nila University, Malaysia. Thanks a lot. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Have a good day. Take care. You too. Thank you. Bye. One-stop solution for worldwide animation, visa support, immigration and travel.